the latest on Tropical Storm Dolly. She made landfall in South Texas yesterday, causing massive flooding and widespread damage. Most of the destruction was on South Padre Island, where our own Dave Price is standing by. Good morning, Dave. Uh, good morning to you, Harry. I want to explain a little bit about what we're doing this morning. We're operating via satellite phone, so there may be a little bit of a delay, and we are jury rigging what we're doing this morning. Over here, you can see one of our sources of light. It's a crew car. We've turned on the headlights. Power is out here, and resources are limited. As you take a look right here, this is just one of the down power lines here. This morning, people are going to just begin to wake up and begin to assess the damage. Here's what we know. It's now been downgraded to a trop tropical storm. And that is good news. It was a two and then a one and now a tropical storm. Widespread flooding, not only here in South Padre, but throughout South Texas. And this morning, numbers are varying. It's hard to get an actual number, but at least 50,000 and up to 100,000 people are without power in South Texas with 14 counties declared disaster areas by Governor Rick Perry. Now, uh, this morning, it is a very different scene than it was 24 hours ago when we were seeing those bands begin to roll on in. Then the storm hit. Uh, within an hour, it was downgraded to a Category 1, but it stayed with 100 mile per hour winds just belting South Texas, and the storm stayed through much of the day. If you want to know what it's like to be through a Category 2 hurricane in a place like South Padre, Listen to the howling wind and the pelleting rain. And when's the last time you looked back at a city street and saw white caps? There are mixed emotions in South Texas this morning. Relief that Dolly has been downgraded, but distress at the damage this powerful Category 2 storm left in her wake. And water is literally blowing into the building because we were here as Dolly came ashore on South Padre Island with the full force of her 100 mile per hour winds, turning streets into rivers, snapping power poles in half, ripping through roofs and smashing windows. More than 140,000 people spent the night with no power and over 5,000 people spent the night in shelters. Now that the storm has moved through, the damage assessment is beginning. Roads are closed, power is out and there's no one on the roads here in South Padre Island. It's a ghost town. Dolly dumped more than a foot of rain in parts of South Texas. Fears of flooding were realized on South Padre Island. Other towns in Dolly's path were also hit hard. Brownsville, Texas was also beaten up by the high winds and drenching downpours. Even inland towns like Port Isabel found themselves washed out by relentless rains and strong winds. Still, throughout South Texas, officials say the levee system held. One bit of good news in the midst of Dolly's destruction. Little comfort for residents like Everett Kasky, the general manager of the Bahia Mar Resort, who could only watch as Dolly turned his lobby into a disaster area. I'm very distraught right now. I'm just very thankful to God that my staff that stayed with me through this and that the guests that are here with us are safe and they're, they're okay. Very, very scary. Needless to say, it's been a tough stretch here in South Padre Island, and the work is just beginning. Dan Quant is with uh, Emergency Services here. Dan, uh, when we spoke yesterday in your office during the storm, you were pretty positive. How has your outlook changed in the last uh, few hours? Well, I'm positive that we've got a lot of work to do, that's for sure. We've got a, 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 a tremendous amount of damage. We did, really didn't have an opportunity to assess it yesterday because during the daylight hours, we were basically in the height of the storm. We couldn't put emergency personnel out to, to assess things once the storm started to less and uh, the sun started to go down, so we really didn't get much of a chance to see what the damage is. We'll be doing that today. We're going to be providing water, trying to get some food in for people. The causeway is now open, but uh, we've got some real problems here. I mean, we can't spin this one. We've got some challenges ahead, but we're going to be back. We're going to be back as absolute. We're going to try to set a record for being open and ready to host people again. So first things first, you're going to get in electrical power early this morning. How long do you imagine it's going to be before 
basic services are restored to the people of South Padre Island? Well, I'm starting to get, for example, water service that we haven't had either has been restored at the hotel I'm at. So at least we've got that going. So we've got a beginning, so the, the, a glimmer right there. In terms of power, I'm not sure how long it will take. Uh, as you've seen driving along here, we've got a stretch in this north part of the community that the power lines are Seven down. Seven miles long. Yeah, so uh, how long that will take, I don't know, but I know we're going to have the resources of the state with it. We appreciate you being here this morning and your hard work. You need some sleep, I'm Thanks. sure. Thank you, sir. All right, that's the situation here right now. We'll update you again throughout the morning, uh, but a long road ahead for the people of South Padre and indeed South Texas too.